I think that Canadians look to us uh, for consistency and predictability in the law. Um, I think that clarity is very important. Um, having said that, we've all taken an oath. We're all pretty strong, independent thinkers. And if we feel um, that uh, there's another answer, then we feel very comfortable in, uh, in saying so. Oh, you know, we're nine independent people. And when you have nine independent people, all of whom are strangers to one another. I mean, remember, I, I always think of this as um, when I extrapolate the importance or the possibility of consensus, I say to myself, I know how hard it is to make a decision with a, with a husband. Where do you want to go for dinner? You want to go see a movie? What are we going to do on our holiday? I've got eight of them. I, there is no decision that I make in my work life that I don't make with eight husbands. So if you think about how hard it is to make with one. Or wives, if we're being. Well, you totally want to be gender neutral. I, <laughs> true. Spouses. So eight you spouses. Have, you eight have spouses. spouses. <laughs> I have eight spouses. I have eight spouses. And, and they didn't pick me, no. and I didn't pick them, and we have to figure out a way to retain our independence, but respect our institutional role, which is collective, be collegial with one another, and still make decisions on behalf of the country. The miracle to me is when we're unanimous. I mean, the idea of getting nine people on board um, as often as we do is incredible. And I think it's because it's a very special court. These are, these are very smart, nice people. And the goal is, when I told you that everybody does their best to do the right thing, it sometimes happens that we think, you know, it would be better if we could figure out a way to be unanimous on this issue. Nobody has to tell us that. We just, and there are no memos that go out saying, uh, how about if we get to be unanimous on this? We just understand when some issues really should be, should be done with, with a voice, if they can. We also prize uh, the right to dissent. That's part of our legal tradition, which we've inherited from, from England, and it's part of the common law tradition. And uh, I personally think it's very, very valuable. So each justice gets to make up her or his own mind. And, uh, but where does consensus come in? Well, consensus for me is not twisting somebody's arm and saying, uh, you're wrong, you've got to come my way. That's not it at all. It's more about exploring uh, ways to minimize differences and isolate differences and avoid uh, writing uh, multiple decisions on points you could agree on with a little more uh, uh, talk, uh, discussion, uh, compromise. So we try to get to as much consensus as we can on every case and in about 75, 80 percent, 75 is more accurate probably for most years, we have a we, we have everybody, more or less, able to sign on. But in some of the cases, uh, people do not agree, and they write their dissent. And those dissents are often very useful. But they're very useful, uh, they're more useful if, if, if they are rare, really, because, uh, and if they're focused on a real point of issue, uh, something we really can't agree on, then they can perhaps fuel debate which will change the law in the future. There are some who say that today's dissents are often tomorrow's majority decisions, if you understand what I mean, and that, that sometimes ideas are put out there by a dissenting judge that, um, uh, in a well-reasoned decision, that in future years may well become the law. Um, and, and so I think dissents are very valuable. I will say this much, though. They create added pressure, I think, on, on the rest of the judges because, you know, if you have a unanimous decision, then you don't have to worry about fending off what one of your colleagues is saying that may well uh, uh, be designed to show that your reasoning isn't quite right. And that's, you know, that, that, that is um, a part of this um, 
job for me that I have found um, um, somewhat difficult. I, when I was in the Court of Appeal for 15 years, I can count on less than one hand the number of times I dissented from somebody or someone dissented from me. And you could check the records, and, and, and that's the way it was. Here, there are regularly, um, uh, regularly cases where some judges are going one way and some are going another way. And, and it's not as if you're just doing this internally. At the end of the day, you know, I've often said we're kind of hanging out the dirty laundry across the whole country for the whole country to see. So you don't, it, it creates pressures that if you've written the majority or whatever, um, you want to try and make sure it's written as best as possible <laughs> because you're, 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 you know, there's someone else that is saying, no, no, this isn't right. And in a way, maybe it's healthy.